Good evening, everyone. Apologies for our delay, a little bit of technical difficulties this evening. Um, so thank you very much for your patience. Uh, my name is Josh Pru, uh, and welcome to our third and final of our alumni volunteer conference calls for 2017, 2018. Um, again, my name is Josh Pru. I'm the Director of Alumni Engagement for the Office of Alumni Relations, and I'm gonna be the moderator. Again, sincerest apologies for getting us delayed today. Um, hopefully, uh, everybody stuck with us, and uh, we'll just jump right into things. Um, before we get be begin today, just want to make sure we point out a few areas of note. We do have 19 of 33 groups uh, from across the country participating today. Um, so that's a great uh, thing to have so many representatives of so many diverse po uh, populations across the country. Um, everybody has a questions toolbar on the right hand side on their toolbar that was provided by GoToWebinar. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, all you need to do is type that in there and we'll get to them throughout the, each portion of the presentation tonight. Um, secondly, we are recording this, so I know some people have to jump off a little early, um, so feel free to do so when you need to. We will be posting this to our YouTube page at youtube youtube.com slash UConn alumni. So uh, moving on, uh, we'll introduce our team to get started. Um, our senior director is Jody Kaplan. Uh, she basically operates in the absence of uh, Mo Cotton Kelly, our vice president. She basically operates as the senior uh, manager uh, at times when she's not available. Jody also oversees our engagement team, uh, which is comprised of myself. Um, I oversee uh, areas including Hartford, New York City, Philly, San Francisco, San Diego, LA, Colorado, Arizona, Seattle, Chicago, Austin, Dallas, Houston, and Sacramento. And I also oversee our alumni career offerings and supervise Matt. Uh, Chris Diaz oversees our alumni affinity groups, uh, the African American Alumni Council, the Latino Council, uh, our LGBTQ alumni group, our UConn Alumni Marching Band, our Lacrosse Alumni, and our Asian American Alumni Council, as well as our alumni networks in Charlotte, Atlanta, Washington, D.C., and also our Florida groups, which include Tampa, South Florida, and Orlando. Chris also spearheaded our inaugural program uh, entitled uh, our Alumni All Access and Exclusive Educational Experience, which just uh, took place in New York City. Uh, Matt Fralino works with our New England and remaining Connecticut groups, specifically our Boston, New Haven, Fairfield County, Southeast Connecticut, and Vermont groups, as well as our groups in Ohio, uh, featuring Cincinnati and Columbus. Lauren Davies is our administrative assistant for our team, but she's the backbone of our work. Many of you have had interactions with her. She's the one bringing all the greatness to you guys with all the pom-poms and everything else you might need for your event. She was responsible for all of our event boxes, event registration pages, um, all of our event attendance tracking, budget and payment tracking, and so much more that keeps us on track with everything we can do across the country with all your help. Uh, moving on to our agenda. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our UConn Gives initiative. We have a special guest from our uh, engagement and acquisition team to join us to kind of talk a little bit about what happened there. We'll jump into our Elevate Your Career Next Level wrap up and our plan for uh, fiscal year 19. UConn Cares, uh, we'll get a wrap up of all the great work you guys just completed in April. Uh, we'll get jumping into our Welcome to the Neighborhood initiative, a little bit in uh, plans for uh, what's coming up uh, this year. And then, of course, leading into the summer months, it's always a time for us to get to the point where we do our fiscal 19 planning. Uh, and then we'll wrap up with some key dates. So to get us started, we have Jennifer Doak Mathewson from our engagement and acquisition team. Um, Jen's here to talk to us about our first ever UConn Giving Day. Jen, do you want to give us a little bit of the highlights? Sure. Thanks, Josh. So as Josh said, I am the Director of Engagement Acquisition at the Foundation. My responsibility or my team's responsibilities are to um, market these wonderful events um, Jody, Josh, and the rest of the team put on every year and to help fundraise um, and try to get people when it comes to giving to people's passions and as they relate to UConn. So we are so thrilled to report that for our first ever Giving Day, which was a university-wide raising initiative um, that occurred this past April, we raised more than $260 from 2,200 plus donors. Um, we had a wide range of representation, not just 45 states. We had strong representation from alumni, faculty, staff, students, and friends, and it was really a, a really happy, joyful celebration of giving to causes um, big, ranging from scholarships that can benefit all students to small 
um, passion-based projects like the Natural Resources Conservation Academy, which goes to different schools in Connecticut to help teach students about conservation. Um, and it was actually the top cause overall in terms of raising um, the most uh, gifts over the course of the day. Um, we, we had many gifts come from email and another 10% from Facebook. The rest came from um, social media and um, other areas. And really what this shows is that the real strength of the giving day was in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. You know, this is, um, it's one thing to get an email from us as the foundation or us as the alumni when it comes to asking for gifts, but it's quite another when the gifts come from your friends. And we had a strong representation from our Giving Day ambassadors. We had um, more than 170 ambassadors raising 200 plus gifts, um, really showing the the strength of UConn Nation and the strength and um, power of volunteers like you when it comes to um, supporting UConn and supporting uh, these causes. So when we come to looking at uh, how we can improve UConn Gives for 2019, um, we're looking at really strengthening uh, the relationships that we have with ambassadors. How can we support them more during the giving day? Um, how can we work with alumni networks across the country to um, support or maybe lift up causes that are important to you within um, different regions, whether that's across Connecticut, across the country, you know, what have you. And then um, how can we provide some kind of fun gamification aspects to it? So last year or this year, our top ambassador raised um, 35 gifts. So the challenge for next year would be, all right, Giving Day Ambassadors, can we beat that for next year? Can we raise more than 35 gifts per person? Um, and really show the strength of UConn Nation across the country. So I'm happy to answer any questions about the first ever Giving Day. This will be an ongoing initiative. It will be happening every spring. And we're really excited to show how um, small gifts can make a huge difference. Thanks very much, Jen. Really appreciate it. Uh, I know that many of our um, committees and leaders across the country uh, also jumped into helping out with the uh, Giving Day Ambassadors. So I know that many of them um, took some pride and took some efforts to get it out there. And I think that some of them will rise to that challenge. So thank you very much for that. Is there any uh, question of, uh, for Jen in regards to UConn Giving Day before Jen jumps off? Uh, we want to give her time back with her family this evening. So uh, just checking in real quick with everybody. And if uh, you do have a question, you can go ahead and type that into your question bar. Um, and then if not, we will uh, let Jen get on with her evening. And I do want to take the opportunity, it's a great point, Josh, to thank each and every one of you um, for helping support UConn Gives and then all the work you do uh, over the year. Well, thanks very much, Jen. It looks like uh, there's nothing coming through at the moment. So if there is anything that uh, people think of throughout the presentation tonight, we'll make sure that gets over to Jen and we can answer those and um, get those returned back to everybody. All right. So all right. Thank thanks so much. Thanks very much for joining us, Jen. Sure. Have a good night. All right. So as Matt has uh, kind of led us into this, uh, Matt's controlling our slides today. So uh, if there's a little bit of delay in our normal process, uh, apologies. My work computer decided not to load today. So we're improvising on the fly here. I hope you don't mind. Um, so as Matt's uh, got us into this next slide here, we're going to talk a little bit about our February career month uh, entitled Elevate Your Career Next Level. Um, so Matt, if you want to jump onto the next slide for us. So uh, what we're going to talk a little bit about is who elevated their careers. We had 13 events across the country, and we had 315 people registered across these 13 events. Uh, as you all know, we've taken a uh, big push in terms of developing uh, month-long initiatives that we can kind of get behind, have the help with uh, Jen's team and our uh, digital engagement uh, marketing teams to really drive the importance of some of these key areas that our alumni are saying that they're in need of. Um, so in, after the successful initiatives we had with Welcome to the Neighborhood over the last few years with our Yukon Cares, I know we've talked about it over the last few uh, calls that we've had, but our Elevate Your Career Next Level program uh, really was a launching point for uh, another one of those types of initiatives. And as you can see here, 25% of the people that attended these events uh, had never attended an event for, with us before. So we were definitely hitting a new demographic in this process. Um, so we're, we're hopeful that as we uh, continue to build the brand that we have here, that uh, we'll only see greater numbers moving forward. 
45% of those attendees that did come forward were uh, donors to the university previously. So uh, clearly we're hitting the new generation as well as those that have been engaged in some capacity with the university before. Our average age was 37. So it was very telling that we skewed um, really across the, 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 the range of different um, uh, ages that could be possible uh, from new graduate to uh, seasoned alum and veteran. Uh, and as you can see, our average class year of attendees was 2004. Our oldest attendee was 80 and our youngest attendee was 22. So really, we, we touched a lot of different people, everybody from uh, fresh out of college to uh, seasoned professional to even some that were retired that wanted to know about second act careers and what they could be doing with their retirement days in terms of a uh, more of a volunteer led career opportunity and whatever the case might be. So from our eyes, this was a huge success and we can't wait to see what happens next year. That being said, we'll move on to the next uh, piece here and tied, and, and tied into Elevate. Um, so on deck for fiscal year 19, Elevate will actually be moving to January. Uh, and part of the reason that we're doing this is we are hopeful that with spreading out our key initiatives, our Yukon Cares, our Elevate, and our Welcome to the Neighborhood, that this will allow some added um, opportunity for us to plan, to be more thoughtful, as well as to develop a stronger marketing campaign to launch off of the greatness success that we had this year uh, and really help us to kind of key, key these in as um, columns or pillars of what we do each year. So as you start thinking about next year and different things that you want to do, there were a lot of different uh, programs that we ran throughout the country, uh, and we will talk a little bit about those. Um, we have a few volunteers that are joining us on this call. Uh, and Matt, if you want to jump to the next one for me. Oh, looks like we lost those slides somewhere. So uh, there we go. All right, so uh, we are going to go um, to Charlotte, and I'm not sure uh, that the person, I think Cindy uh, was supposed to join us today, but unfortunately I think something has come up because I'm not seeing her on here. So we're actually going to go to Chris Diaz, who actually worked with Charlotte on this one, and see uh, what Charlotte did. Chris, would you mind jumping in on behalf? Chris, are you still with us? All right, looks like Chris is lost for the moment as well. So uh, I will jump in. Apologies again, everybody. Um, what we did in Charlotte is actually our career coach, John Brady, uh, was able to fly down to Charlotte and did an event at a uh, Morton Steakhouse, as you see here. Uh, and he featured his talk about showing professional value in new ways. I know that uh, John actually visited a number of different cities uh, and did this presentation as well. Um, in the photo, you might recognize a face there. Uh, that is one uh, men's basketball alumnus, uh, Rashad Anderson, actually resides down in the um, Tampa market. Um, and believe it or not, the showing professional values in new ways was also the same for uh, Tampa as well. Um, and so uh, what they did is they basically, and I apologize, I'm not as familiar with Charlotte uh, as, as I would like to be, so I apologize for kind of improvising here. Um, Chris is indicating that she's uh, on the call, but unfortunately we can't hear her, so um, we are going to go and move on. Um, and we are going to move on to our Tampa uh, group. I'm just checking to make sure if our Tampa person is here today. Uh, Samantha, are you with us? All right, well, Samantha's on the call, and I'm just checking to see if she can hear. Looks like she's dialed in, but not available for a microphone. So we're 0 for 2 at the moment. So I apologize, everybody. All right, Samantha, it looks like because you're dialed in, you need to enter the PIN code that was sent your way. Again, there's a pin code that's sent your way because you're dialed in and not on a uh, the webinar. So I apologize to everybody again. Another technical issue there. Um, looks like we might have to move on at this point just to keep everybody kind of moving. All right. So Matt, if you want to move us on to the next slide, we'll uh, we'll hopefully uh, if they if folks are able to jump on, maybe we'll go backwards. But Matt, let's turn it over to you right now for the Yukon Cares piece. And what we'll do is we'll get the updated information to folks via email on the Elevate. Sure. Great. So um, good evening, everyone. Again, apologies for the uh, technical uh, issues today. Uh, it truly was the perfect storm. We had some crazy weather uh, sweeping through. Uh, uh, the middle portion of the state and uh, the southern portion. So we're just uh, getting through it all together here. Um, but anyways, um, you know, thanks for joining the call. Um, it's been an outstanding year, too, 
view concares. Um, I wanted to take a moment to recap the program quickly and share some of the great activities um, that we all did together, uh, as well as the successes that we achieved. Um, so what you're looking at um, is the many projects that we um, participated in, that you all participated in throughout the month of April. There were 27 events in all. Uh, that's a lot uh, for, for uh, you know, to pack it all in a month. So thank you for that. Um, so just a, a quick kind of summary of what you're looking at. Matt, if I can uh, jump in real quick, the slide has not advanced. Uh, it's advanced on mine, so I don't, I'm not certain. Um, are we all seeing a uh, collage of photos? There we go. Now it's moving, but slowly. Okay. Okay. A little bit of lag. Okay. So, um, what we're looking at um, is, like I said, the twenty uh, some of the twenty seven events that we did uh, throughout the month. So, uh, very quickly, uh, we're going to go top to bottom, left to right, uh, just to give you a sense of what you're looking at. Um, you're looking at um, the alum, the UConn alumni staff, and some UConn alumni in Hartford, in the Hartford area, at Hartford Food Share. Uh, then we have our Fairfield County Alumni Network at our Flax Hill Park cleanup. Uh, that was in Norwalk, Connecticut. Uh, next, we have our Austin Alumni Network at the Austin Animal Center. We then have our Hartford Alumni Network and our Yukon Health Medical and Dental Alumni Boards at Yukon Health in Farmington. Uh, they were making blankets there. Um, and slightly above that, you'll see uh, we have our San Diego alums at the Helen Woodward Animal Center. Um, next, we'll move to our uh, Colorado Alumni Network, and uh, they were working on uh, their trail maintenance project. Um, moving to Orlando and the Orlando Network at the Ronald McDonald House, uh, cooking, serving, and cleaning, doing everything over there. Um, we also have our uh, in Florida, our South Florida Alumni Network at Feeding South Florida. Uh, moving to the Chicago Alumni Network at the Greater Chicago Food Depository. Uh, next, we have the Charlotte Alumni Network at the Park Road Cleanup. Um, our Philly Alumni Network at the Urban Stead Farm. Uh, that was a repeat event for them. Uh, we have our Southeast Alumni Network in the uh, bottom uh, left corner. Uh, they were at the uh, Bluff Point State Park in Groton, Connecticut, obviously right there on the shore. Um, back out west, out to Arizona, the Arizona Alumni Network uh, participated in an event at the ICM Food and Clothing Bank. Um, moving to the alumni um, group in New Haven, where um, there were actually two events um, on uh, consecutive weekends, and both of those were at the Downtown Evening Soup Kitchen. Um, we have a little more from our blanket making at the uh, Hartford event in collaboration with UConn Health. Um, and then finally, uh, last but not least, our Tampa Alumni Network at the Tampa SPCA. So a lot of events, um, clearly uh, a lot of impact as you'll see. So uh, by the numbers, um, it's, it's always good to kind of break everything down and it, it's it's pretty uh, remarkable when, when you look at it. So in year two, uh, you know, as I said, we brought 27 community service activities and events uh, across the country, uh, led by you all, our alumni network and, and affinity group leaders. Um, when it's all said and done, we had uh, 455 alumni, uh, friends and family uh, signed up, uh, reg or registered, I should say, for these events uh, that were all held throughout the month. I should note, though, that um, the 455, that is probably a conservative figure um, as we're uh, really in the process of uh, verifying all the event registrants within our system to make sure we didn't miss anybody. So it might actually be more. It, it very well could be more. So, um, you know, there, stay tuned for updates on that. Um, but as a result, though, you know, you, our alums, um, gave 1,017 hours of your time uh, to support um, organizations and causes that tackle the issues of hunger, the environment, animals, and health. Um, so looking, uh, again, quickly at, you know, what we did uh, to, to further those causes, we 
prepare and serve well over 600 meals. We sorted some 23,711 pounds of food, uh, gathered over 1,000 pounds of trash, cleaned 13 acres of parks and gardens. We helped 120 uh, tremendous Special Olympic athletes. Um, we made 40 no-sew blankets for cancer patients uh, here in Connecticut, and uh, a whole lot more. So we are on to the next slide, hoping you all can see that. Um, we'll get into the uh, stories of what some of our uh, groups and what some of the events were that you all helped to plan and implement um, within our alumni network. So um, our alumni leader from Fairfield County, where we'll lead off, he's not available, um, but I'll just talk quickly about this. Um, so, and I was here, um, and it, it was a great event. Um, we had this event. In, here in Connecticut in Fairfield County in Norwalk at the Flax Hill Park, which the park was basically, um, you know, right in the middle uh, of, a, of a neighborhood. So, um, you know, if, you, if you're getting there and, uh, you know, you, you, if you blink, you'd, you'd miss the entrance. It was very tucked away, but once you kind of got in there, as you can see, very wide open. Um, we selected this um, at, from our uh, basically, our alumni network in Fairfield, they identified um, Keep Norwalk Beautiful, which is an offshoot of Keep America Beautiful. So they selected um, that organization as the organization where we wanted to spend our time. So in collaboration with Keep Norwalk Beautiful, uh, we were able to get involved with them where that organization basically on Earth Day partnered with the city of Norwalk um, with the city of Norwalk mayor's clean city initiative where there were groups of people all over the city um, cleaning and, and doing different activities and our group our Yukon group they assigned us to our own location so there were I believe 35 people uh, who you see in that photo um, and basically it was uh, about two or three hours of you know, combing the park, picking up trash. Um, we found some uh, pretty interesting things along the way, as you could imagine. But um, kind of cumulatively, you'll see that center photo. Um, the uh, the lady um, standing on top. She's actually standing on the um, the dump truck that we filled, uh, basically to the top with trash bags. So so that was exciting. Um, it was a great event, and um, you know we look forward to um, doing more like that in the area next year. Moving on, so we'll move out to Cincinnati, and um, again, another one of our uh, alumni leaders out there. Uh, he's not available tonight, but um, I'll. You have to listen to me talk a little more, I guess. Um, I'll just give you a quick update on what they did. So basically, um, that group in in Cincinnati wanted to partner with Give Back Cincinnati, who basically organizes a uh, citywide cleanup, similar to what we did um, in Fairfield, but the same concept of, you know, the whole citywide cleanup where they plugged our UConn alumni into an existing event and kind of gave us our own uh, unique uh, area to, to do our part. So as you can see here, they sent us over to the Price Hill Garden area uh, in Cincinnati, in downtown Cincinnati, rather. And, um, you know, here we basically cleaned, cleaned up the, uh, the whole garden area, garden slash park area, I should say. And um, the main activity was really, um, if you see to the right, um, you know, there are a, a series of gardens. They basically resoiled those gardens, tilled, you know, tilled them, um, put fresh soil in, and um, got some plants in there. So, and you kind of, on the right, you can kind of see the before and after which we thought was was pretty cool. So a big thanks to Cincinnati, the Cincinnati group, I should say. And um, again, uh, looking forward to uh, another great year out there. And next, uh, I don't know if you, hopefully everyone is seeing our New York City Alumni Network. Um, I believe Alyssa is on the call right now. So I will, give it to her to uh, give us a rundown of what they did. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much. Um, again, my name is Alyssa, and I'm one of the volunteers in the New York City chapter here with the with UConn alumni. 
uh, for the New York City Yukon Cares Initiative, I had chosen to work with the Special Olympics. Um, I'll quickly go through kind of why I chose this organization, a little bit about the event and kind of the feedback that I got. Uh, so I had chosen to work with Special Olympics just because I felt like it was an organization that I personally have always been interested in working with. But beyond that, um, when Josh and I had spoke about last year's event um, and the numbers that had attended, I knew I definitely wanted to boost the numbers because, because New York City is such a big chapter here. I knew we could come out bigger than we did the year before. So I thought of an organization or a group that our alumni might be interested in. And coming from UConn, you know, sports is definitely a big thing. Uh, I thought teaming up with Special Olympics would be uh, something that our group would be interested in. Um, overall, it was a great event and we had a really great turnout. We had 36 RCPs and we had 33 people attend. Um, at the event, we were there pretty early in the morning um, up in the Bronx for their regional bowling competition. Um, this event went from about 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Um, our group assisted over 120 athletes plus their coaches and family with this event. Uh, we had three main responsibilities throughout the day. We helped with registration, lane management, and the award ceremony. Uh, registration was pretty straightforward, uh, helping everyone check in, kind of get to where they need to go. Lane management was, was, was what most of the day consisted of. We made sure everyone on their lanes went uh, in turn. We helped with scoring and keeping official scores at the end of each um, each round. And then with awards, we kind of just were there cheering on the, the athletes um, who had won the overall competition. And again, cheering was something that we did throughout the entire day as well. Um, overall, it was a really great event and everyone who attended was super happy, including uh, Special Olympics was very happy with our UConn group in general. Um, I got great feedback throughout the event from Special Olympics as well as after the event. Um, we were such a big group, so it was really easy to kind of split us up and kind of throw us wherever wherever help was needed. Um, during the event, it was really great to see the range of alumni that attended. Um, we had people come from Boston, Connecticut, New Jersey, New York. So it was really a, definitely a great event um, attendance-wise. And another great thing about it was pretty much every alum brought either a friend or a family member so it really kind of got everyone within that UConn kind of spirit uh, going. It's definitely um, an organization that I would love to work with again next year and would recommend to other cities throughout the United States. Um, they were super um, helpful with me with planning and everything. Um, originally, they did not have anything on the calendar during April. Uh, after a couple phone calls with some lead people here in New York City uh, Special Olympics, we actually were able to find a date that worked for both of us, and this competition kind of came to be where not set up for us, but kind of they planned it so we could definitely attend. So um, moving forward, I would definitely work with them again. And if anyone has any questions, I do have some connections here in New York now from this experience, um, and I'm sure they would be able to set us up uh, moving forward with other cities as well. Thanks very much, Alyssa. It's great stuff. And, um, you know, again, thank you for setting that up um, for us. Absolutely. So what we're all looking at here, I hope um, we're looking at uh, some numbers. Um, you know, we are in year two, clearly building uh, momentum. Um, just wanted to show you guys how year two compared with our first year of UConn Cares. So you'll see our registrations by year uh, coming from last year's figure. Uh, we significantly built on last year's success and we engaged over 450 alums, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 450 of you and your friends and your family uh, with uh, uh, registering. So um, we also, I should say, saw close to a 100 first-time alumni event registrants uh, this year in 2018. So that's um, nearly 99 actually uh, alums who had never um, registered for a uh, for an alumni event period, um, and you all uh, those new new folks registered for. A UConn CARES event. And then finally, uh, by way of numbers, um, just in terms of kind of the average makeup of, of the alums who registered, uh, if you were curious, we so the cl average class year was 1999, and then the average uh, age was 42. So right, right in the middle. All right. Feedback. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Matt.
Okay, so we have feedback here. Um, and again, we um, I want to show you a few things that you all had to say about this year's uh, UConn CARES event uh, in response to, um, you know, the reason why you enjoyed them. Uh, you know, we sent out a survey last week, um, got, some, got some responses. So uh, a few key themes uh, that we found were, uh, you know, working together and communicating with each other, um, meeting local alums, um, serving your communities as, you know, basically the face of UConn. Um, and I, I should say that last year, uh, based on our survey in 2017, um, you know, your responses spoke to having more time to connect with each other uh, th throughout the service activity. So I think this year uh, we got uh, even closer to that goal and we did uh, an even better job. Um, and I think, as you see, kind of the, the final quote on this uh, slide, I think it pretty much summarizes, um, you know, the thoughts that we we received um, where, you know, you enjoyed most was the camaraderie, connecting all in the name of doing something good, which really, you know, you can't describe UConn Cares um, any better. Uh, so more, a little more feedback for you. Um, uh, another big question, would you all participate again? Uh, the overwhelming majority of everyone had a great experience this time, and 94% of you said uh, that you would take part again in 2019. So we certainly look forward to seeing you then. Um, and uh, before you know it, planning will begin. So get ready. Um, but with that, I just wanted to say, you know, a huge thank you to all of you who helped um, to make this such a great program. You know, the numbers speak for themselves, and we couldn't have such a great outcome without all of you and all of your buy-in, which is very, very important. So we're very excited to tell this story uh, to the rest of UConn Nation as we go forward. And with that, um, I think I'll give it back to Josh. Thank you, Matt. Uh, and as you all can probably see uh, from a trend here, obviously we talked about first-time registrants for our Elevate program, first-time registrants for our Yukon Cares initiative. Uh, what you'll start seeing from us, and many of you have already had conversations with us, obviously given the role that our alumni groups uh, have throughout the country, part of the charge that we have is to uh, provide the largest possible and broadest possible engagement we can to bring alumni back to the university community in some capacity. Um, whether you're here in Connecticut or you're in San Diego, California, uh, obviously making sure that UConn is part of your uh, part of your life still, even after you leave. Um, our job is to make sure that we're doing something that really engages our broadest population to bring them back home in some capacity, whether home is here or California. So um, again, kudos to everybody for everything they've done with the Yukon Cares Initiative. Um, before we get over to Chris, looks like uh, Samantha Andrews is available to chat. So hang on one second, Samantha. Samantha, can you hear me? Yes. Can you oh, there we go. All right, Sam. Uh, I know that we're a little off topic, but um, if you would like to still speak to what you guys did in Tampa for our Elevate program, um, we'll just take a quick jump back, everybody, to our Elevate program and what Tampa did um, just this past February. So, Sam, if you don't mind taking a, taking a, us uh, down a little bit into what you guys put together. Sure. Thank you. And sorry for my technical difficulties. But um, we held our Elevate event here in Tampa on a Thursday evening in February. It was from 6.30 to 8.30, and, and our speaker was John Brady, as Josh had mentioned. Um, the topic was showing your professional value in new ways. We held it at a place called the Center Club here in Tampa, which is a private business club that we were able to get into because of John Brady's connections. Um, so this was a great venue. It was on the top floor of a high-rise business building. Um, and we had originally talked about doing a retiree-related topic since a lot of our local alumni are retirees. But we decided to go ahead and keep it more on the um, working folks topic and we ended up having a great turnout we had about 15 attendees and we had some new people that had never been to one of our events before and as you might have seen in the picture before and as Josh alluded to we had two UConn basketball celebrities 
Um, the first one on the left in that photo was Colleen Healy, who was on the 94 women's basketball team. And I always see her on the field during all of the recent women's basketball big events. Um, and on the right there was Rashad Anderson, who was on the 2004 men's basketball championship team. So I thought it was very exciting to have two celebrities there. <laughs> um, Chris even came down to Florida for this event. So it was great to see her. Uh, it was a free event, and it had it included appetizers, sliders, and an open bar with wine and beer. So it was a great deal. You couldn't beat that. And that's about it. We look forward to doing another event next year. Thanks very much, Sam. Appreciate it. And uh, sorry again for technical difficulties that we were experiencing. And uh, we really appreciate you taking a few minutes just to kind of recap that for us. All right. So we'll try again and see if Chris is uh, able to get on. I know that she uh, was having some difficulties on her end as well. Chris, are you with us? All right, looks like we're back to square one again. All right, so um, looks like Chris is having some difficulties as well. So again, we do apologize. Looks like uh, internet access here in Connecticut was uh, having a little bit of challenge since our uh, massive storm front just rolled through. Um, so it looks like we are just uh, kind of cleaning up from that. I know in Chris's area specifically, they got hit pretty hard. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with it. So again, apologies there. Matt, if you're still with me, if you want to advance the slide, we'll, uh, we'll kind of tackle the welcome to the neighborhood piece. And uh, hopefully if Chris is able to jump back on she can. All right, so uh, as the slide is slowly moving, uh, what we are now launching into is the third of our uh, initiatives, our month-long initiatives. Many of you who have been with us for a number of years know that this is our third annual uh, Welcome to the Neighborhood initiative. Um, we are launching this again in September, and obviously one of the main goals here is to uh, welcome our new grants to the alumni family. Um, it really is an opportunity for us to capture uh, information about people once they leave UConn and where they're going. Oftentimes we lose communication with some folks the minute they leave. We try to stay in touch with this, uh, our folks as much as we can, send them emails, all of those type of things. Uh, and as many of you know, all of the information and communication um, that we do with folks is geo-targeted. So uh, we use this as an opportunity to kind of identify where our folks are. So we highly encourage all of our groups across the country, including our alumni affinity uh, groups as well, to partner with regional groups uh, to really do something to try to bring these people back into the alumni community again, as we talked about, so that it is not five or 10 years before we get them back into the alumni fold, that they feel like the UConn alumni network and community uh, really is something that they can feel from the minute that they graduate and walk out those doors into whatever uh, new environment they, they move into, whether that's in Denver, Colorado, Austin, Texas, Chicago, Illinois, or still in the backyard of Hartford, Connecticut. So. Um, it's an opportunity for us to, as I mentioned, engage or re-engage. Uh, and it's also an opportunity for uh, folks who may have transplanted. Uh, they've been in the alumni community, say, in Fairfield County for 20 years, but they decided to take a job in Dallas, Texas. Uh, it's an opportunity for those people as well to be welcomed into the new Dallas community that they're moving into uh, or similar situation. Uh, so a number of opportunities we have, uh, many of you have experienced over the last few years, uh, they're casual events, they're social events, and they're meant to be s extremely affordable. Um, so whether that's a game watch, uh, I know New York City has, uh, for the last couple of years, they've recreated Nickel Night that many of you may have experienced on campus, where they have a $10 cover charge and then dollar drinks for the evening, uh, while UConn is playing a football game, usually the opening game of the series, which is on a Thursday night. Um, so happy hour game watches, brewery and wine events. I know that in uh, Connecticut, when we launched our 1881 Brewery Series, our uh, limited release uh, alumni beer series, that was actually tied into one of our Welcome to the Neighborhood events and saw over 130 people attend. Uh, I know that Denver, Colorado did an event with the Colorado Rockies and saw one of their highest totals they've ever seen with 50 attendees for that. So there's opportunity abound for you to uh, kind of explore. Um, Matt, if you want to jump onto the next slide for me. All right, as we're slowly moving along on this one as well. Um, 
it's not moving at all. So anyways, <laughs> so um, other opportunities that are out there that people have done, um, Malibu Wines out in L.A., that's a consistent uh, annual initiative. Uh, they've done that for three years running as well, and they'll be going ahead and doing that again this year. It's an opportunity for each individual area to go ahead and really develop some um, traditions and uh, consistent opportunities. Um, so, Matt, I don't know if you want to try hitting it again. It's not moving on our end, just uh, as a quick aside. So anyways, uh, what you're going to be doing or what we're hoping that everybody does at this point is as we uh, continue to move forward, um, planning for September, uh, hopefully um, you are having some conversations already with your alumni liaison. And as it's slowly moving, um, there's a couple of stats here, obviously, um, we'd like to kind of share from last year as a recap. Um, but still slowly moving. I'm not entirely sure. Again, apologies for the extreme technical difficulties we're having tonight with this. Um, looks like uh, this this program, and maybe it's just on my end, I'm getting notification that it is moving. So um, unfortunately, I can't read anything that's listed here, so I do apologize. Josh, Josh I, guess I could jump in and, and read that if you'd like. Go I, for it. I, I yeah, because unfortunately, I'm frozen on my end, so please go ahead. So in terms of the welcome to the neighborhood, uh, what we did in um, uh, this, this past uh, uh, basically uh, a year uh, in 2017, uh, there were 20, uh, 23 events uh, across the country. Um, we had uh, 817 um, event registrants um, and a whopping, uh, basically over half, 429 of that 817 were first timers. Um, the average age, uh, of a registrant was 34. Uh, however, the average age of the first timers was 29. And basically the age range um, ran the, the gamut from 18 to 80. Um, and that breaks down to a class year range of 1958 to 2017. So really uh, the full the full spectrum right there. So, uh, Matt, thank you for doing that. Um, and, and as that kind of goes to kind of what we said before, it's really an opportunity to uh, bring all ages and all walks of our alumni base together to really show what UConn Nation is all about and what our individual alumni networks and the power that comes from those. So I think that's a great number. Matt, do you want to continue? Yep. Uh, are we seeing the... Um the final slide, the summer uh, planning season slide. It's showing up on my end. Great. All right, so um, as we enter into um, the summer months, obviously many uh, many of us have already started to set up some of our uh, check-in uh, costs to start setting our calendar for the fall, and some of you are even looking at things already for next year. Um, so as we continue to do that, just a couple of things to keep on your radar. Obviously, our September month is uh, our Welcome to the Neighborhood initiative. Our January, as we mentioned, is going to be our new Elevate Your Career Next Level, moving from February. And again, April is going to be continuously our Yukon Cares initiative. Um, what we found is that uh, April as well, given that there's a uh, national week of community service that occurs in April, it tends to work out really nicely with a lot of opportunities there. Um, one other thing to keep in mind as you're looking at planning those three events, as well as other things that you're looking and hoping to do throughout the year, is that oftentimes UConn's operating in your own backyard uh, with a number of different things. We have schools and colleges that are doing various things. Uh, I know that Fairfield County in New York um, experienced this quite often. So uh, regardless of where you are uh, in the country, just uh, you know, make sure that you're chatting uh, you know, with your alumni liaison, you're hearing different things that are going on, whether um, other activities are ongoing. Sometimes it's easy for us to collaborate rather than come up with something new. Uh, and to jump in as uh, you know, supporters or co-sponsors of an event. So um, we don't want to overburden our area sometimes. Uh, you know, the, sometimes more is not necessarily better. So we want to just be conscious of that. Um, but as you do start to plan of different things, obviously there's the five key areas that we've been talking about uh, for a number of years that we try to engage in so that we are hitting all of our demographics across the across the board, whether that's uh, family friendly events, um, social events, brew tours, happy hours, paint parties, uh, lifelong learning events where we bring um, faculty to uh, certain cities. I know that Texas just experienced this. Um, they had our leading genomics professor coming to town. Uh, California experienced uh, some of our uh, political 
science faculty just recently. Chicago uh, unfortunately got snowed out, but had our cybersecurity panel coming out that way. Um, so it's a good opportunity for us to kind of collaborate. Um, career elevate activities, obviously, we want to focus on January for that. Community service, same thing for our Yukon Cares. And of course, uh, the uh, one that always is so easy for us to put together when there's g good games on and things of that sort, or uh, alumni that are uh, playing for certain uh, major league teams, WNBA, NBA, NFL teams, um, obviously we can go ahead and do some supportive events there. So uh, great opportunities abound as we're kind of moving forward. So, um, Matt, if you want to jump onto the next slide for us. Should be popping up right now. Uh, I'm not getting it, but uh, Matt, stop me if I'm wrong. The last slide is just our uh, dates, key dates, is it not? Correct. All right. So um, so our key dates here, uh, obviously, we've got a number of things. We're just keeping in mind September 1st through 30th, uh, obviously, is our welcome event. Uh, for those of you looking to find out what are some of the key um, athletic milestones over the course of the year, uh, just a reminder that uh, UConn is playing in Syracuse this year. So for football on September 22nd. So be sure that you are finding your way to Syracuse. Uh, UConn is working on uh, a pregame hangout uh, prior to the game somewhere local to the campus area. Uh, right now we're targeting, for those of you familiar with Syracuse, the Marshall Street area, we will make sure that everybody that wants to know about that is aware of that. Um, homecoming, I believe, is October 26, 27, and 28, and UMass, a friendly UMass rivalry, will continue. Uh, they'll be coming to town, uh, so obviously you won't want to miss that on Saturday. Uh, November 15 and 16, the Men's Basketball 2K Classic. It's a two-day tournament in New York City, uh, so that Thursday and Friday. Uh, for those of you that attended in the past, we do have Legends on hold once again, like we did last year. Uh, and for those that are interested, uh, the rebirth uh, rebirth of the famed Ted's Beaver drink uh, will be making another appearance that week. Uh, so that's a two-day tournament featuring Syracuse, Oregon, and Iowa. And then UConn is playing a third game in New York City at Madison Square Garden on December 22nd. So um, Villanova, old Big East rivals will be coming to town. So those of you that uh, uh, do follow men's basketball, obviously the uh, reigning national champions uh, against UConn in the backyard uh, should be a pretty good fight and pretty fun. Uh, January 1st to 31st, we're going to be targeting Elevate, our career month. And then again, April 1st to 30th is our UConn Karis month. So um, that being said, um, if there's any questions about anything, uh, we've kept you to that one hour mark and uh, we'd like to let you guys kind of head back to your, uh, to your evening with your families and your friends. And uh, um, if you have any final questions, please feel free to uh, write those into the question box and we'll go ahead and answer those. If not, uh, your alumni liaison is going to be starting to reach out to you over the next couple of weeks to really start setting up uh, those planning calls with your committees and uh, getting those planned out in earnest. So, um, we can't thank you all enough for what you do. Uh, the success is in the numbers, and you guys have truly shown that the power of UConn Nation and the alumni networks is uh, doing some really great things across the country, and you should be incredibly proud of yourself. Um, we are, and we are incredibly thankful because none of this would be possible. Uh, I know Matt said this earlier as well. None of this is possible without all of you and the effort that you put in because we can't be everywhere. And um, we truly rely heavily on all of you, and it's really what makes our jobs enjoyable. And it's what makes the university the great university that it is today because of all of you. So uh, that being said, everyone have a fantastic night. Enjoy your summers. Uh, and we'll be in touch shortly as we plan for another fantastic year. Again, thanks, everybody. And we'll talk to you all soon.